first of the open debate contributions is from Mary Gouchillon. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And I'm also grateful to Emma Harper for bringing forward this motion for debate today and giving us the chance to discuss this in chamber. It is an often, it's often lamented that we do have a poor record when it comes to lung disease. And it's, we've heard all the numerous reasons associated with that today, such as social deprivation, heavy industry and smoking. And it's now COPD is now responsible for more deaths per year than coronary heart disease and accounts for approximately 8% of all hospital admissions. And we heard from Colin Smith that over 129,000 people in Scotland have been diagnosed with COPD. And as we've also heard already tonight, there are likely many more people with the disease who have yet to be diagnosed. And in Tayside alone, there are over 10,000 people who live with COPD. Now, there have been significant advances in the management of the condition, one of which is the use of pulmonary rehabilitation, which we've heard quite a lot about this evening. And it's that that I really want to focus my speech on today. Because while I rattled off some statistics at the beginning to make it sound like I'm knowledgeable about the condition, uh, just to follow on from Joan McAlpine's point, it's something that, uh, it was a condition that I really wasn't all that aware of, and something that I've only really become more familiar with recently after I met with my local pulmonary rehab group in Forfar and took part in their session. Now, pulmonary rehab is designed to be a fixed period of treatment, which is recommended to last be anywhere between six and 12 weeks. And it combines exercise, education, and advice for support, uh, to support those who live with COPD. However, as it's already been mentioned, I think Rachel Hamilton mentioned it first in her speech, that it's something that isn't currently available across the whole of Scotland at present. Not every health board offers it, and for those that do, only 13% of those who would actually benefit from pulmonary rehab actually receive it. And that is a problem with the, down to the lack of referrals. So, for example, I said that in Tayside we have 10,000 people diagnosed with COPD. Around half of those would benefit from pulmonary rehab, but when we look at the, the number of referrals following on from that, the number drops down to less than 700. There are also other barriers to participation in pulmonary rehab, such as access, just basic things like access to the venues and even travel to get there, which is a key issue across rural constituencies such as mine. And these are significant problems because if you have difficulty with breathlessness, you can struggle, struggle taking pub public transport or even just walking any distance to the venue where the, the pulmonary rehab is taking place. As I mentioned earlier, I recently visited a pulmonary rehab group in my constituency. Forfar Airways is run by Ian Baxter, who was diagnosed with COPD in 2004. He found that his medication wasn't helping and he was advised by his local practice nurse to attend a, uh, a lung rehabilitation group. And he would tell you himself that it really transformed his life. And at that time, there, uh, they... Uh, he, bought, he and his friends set up their own pulmonary rehab called for for airways. The group applied for a grant, insurance and uh, received support from Chest, Heart and Stroke Scotland. Ian himself obtained an exercise qualification from Angus Council so that he could take over when the group's yoga teacher wasn't available. And the group has now grown to around 40 members. I met Ian and the others at the session and yeah, it was, it was an experience anyway. There were around 40 there that day from all over Angus and the exercises including stre uh, stretching, seated exercises and singing, which of course I took part in. And what's great about these sessions is that the therapy isn't just physical therapy, it's a social event too. I had the chance to speak to other members there who told me about the impact that the rehab had had on their lives. And like Ian, it had really transformed their lives. They told me how they felt fitter, they were able to walk further, and how they'd been able to expand the number of everyday tasks they were capable of, basic tasks that they were completely unable to do before. And everything I saw and heard that day backed up the clinically proven evidence of just how effective pulmonary rehabilitation can be. Pulmonary rehab is not only a cost-effective treatment, but far more importantly, it has the ability to change people's lives. And it's something which has the chance to improve the lives of countless others suffering with the condition, and it shouldn't be down to chance as to whether or not it's something that's offered to them. I want to thank Emma Harper again for highlighting this, and I would encourage all health boards to offer this vital service. Thank you.